So people say, ah, oh, MacArthur, he's fixated on this. He's a one-trick pony. He's a one-ring circus. He's always haranguing about the charismatics. Well, if you're a part of Grace Church, you'd know better than that. <laughs> we, we've spent over forty years going verse by verse through the New Testament. I don't think we're fixed on one thing. I came here in 1969, and since 1969 we've had one conference on the charismatic movement, and this is it. And it's come too late, really. It's come too late. We lanced a wound that should have been lanced long ago, but we've tried to exercise patience. I'm not fixated on this. And by the way, they were accusing me of that yesterday when we were only two days. Two days out of forty-five years. <laughs> there are other issues that have occupied us, like the exaltation of Jesus Christ and every other thing in the Word of God. And then we have been accused of offending people and hurting their feelings. I don't want to purposely do that. I was introduced by a charismatic leader once at a booksellers convention who introduced me as, this is my friend John MacArthur who's much nicer in person than he is in his sermons. <laughs> I hope that's always true. I hope that I hold the truth with kindness. I hope I hold the truth with love. But when I open the Word of God, it must speak. And to be honest with you, I do care about the feelings of people. I do care about offending them, but not nearly as much as I care about offending God. This is an alien movement. It is an alien movement. I don't want to get into all the history of that, but I've been thinking about this a lot lately. There is a stream of sound teaching, sound doctrine, sound theology that runs all the way back to the apostles. It runs through uh, Athanasius and Augustine, and it runs through Luther and Calvin, and it runs through the great Refor Reformation and the Reformers, and it runs through, as we were hearing last night, the Puritans. and. And everything seems so clear to them, and it, it, it runs through the Westminster Divines, and it, it, it runs through the pathway of Charles Spurgeon and David Martin Lloyd-Jones, and it, it keeps running, and it runs through people like S. Lewis Johnson and Jim Boyce and names that we've used, and it runs down to today to the R.C. Sproles and others, and that's the stream of, of sound doctrine. They're the heroes of, of this generation of people in that stream. We know who they are. You've been hearing about them this week. Our hearers run back down through that same stream. We go back to the John Rogers. We go back to the 288 Marian Martyrs. We go back to Fox's Book of Martyrs and we shed tears on the pages of that book when we see what was done to the people who carried the truth to the next generation at such a great price. We, we have a deep and abiding love for a person like William Tyndale for what He has done. Those are our heroes. But you have to understand, this other stream of evangelicalism goes back about to 1966. 1966. When the hippies came out of San Francisco, showed up in Orange County, joined Calvary Chapel, and we had the launch of an informal, barefoot, beach, drug-induced kind of young people that told the church how the church should happen, how it should act. Hymns went out, suits went out. For the first time in the history of the church, the conduct of the church was conformed to a subculture that was born in LSD and marijuana in San Francisco, migrated to Southern California. It's a completely different stream. That launches the informal, culturally driven, culturally defined, give them what they want kind of church that ends up in the seeker-friendly church, takes a branch in the vineyard, and the vineyard leads to the excesses of the contemporary charismatic movement. That's a completely different stream. That's not our stream. Those aren't our heroes. I don't go back 
to Lonnie Frisbee, who led the Jesus movement and died of AIDS as a homosexual. I don't go back there. That's not my stream. But that's the stream that has produced the culturally bound, culturally driven, seeker-driven church movement. And while there are good and bad and, and better and best and worst elements of it, that's where it comes from. We, we're very different, very different. Our heroes are very different. We know who our people are. And if, you're say, if you say you're on this side and you are on this side, then you have a responsibility to be faithful to this marvelous history. 